Amanda from The Fundamental Home. It's Friday and well it's really not Friday when I'm filming but it's gonna be Friday when you see this and it's uh, frugal family food and this month for March we are doing frugal quick meals meals that you can make in under 30 minutes this week we actually were supposed to have Cherish from Hope's Homestead and unfortunately uh, Cherish suffered a couple of losses in her family and wasn't able to do it this week so you guys be praying for her and her family I'm gonna to link to her channel up here and you guys go send her some well wishes and encouragement this week while she's going through such a difficult time but uh, I knew that I was making Sloppy Joe's this week and I knew that you all wanted to see it and it is a frugal quick meal. So I talked to Tangi and she said that I could go ahead and share it this week with you guys and uh, that's what we're going to be making. So I'm going to take you over to the stove and show you what we got going on and you can see how we do Sloppy Joe's. Okay, so the very first thing that I have right here are my onions. They are sliced and I have some oil in the pan and they're gonna go right on in there. Now, one thing I will say, I'm turning my stove on while I do this. One thing I will say about um, making this a frugal quick meal is that all the things that you can do in advance help to uh, make your meal go more quickly. So I actually sliced up these onions just now, but one way to make them go more quickly is if you used onions that you'd sliced and previously frozen from your freezer. I'm going to link up the top up here. I love it when I put my little finger up here. Anyway, um, um, at the top of the screen you will see a link and that is to um, me freezing peppers. Well, I freeze onions the exact same way. Uh, I don't have any right now because I still haven't frozen all the bags from my huge Save-A-Lot haul, but I need to. But anyway, <laughs> maybe that'll be another video this week. So um, this would be a lot quicker if they were already pre-chopped and frozen. They're not, so I had to cut them now. But if you wanted to cut down on your time, if your time's super short, that's one way you can cut back. Another way you can cut back, and I got all my other ingredients back here, is if you pre-cook your meat. Now, a lot of times I have pre-cooked ground beef or ground turkey or ground chicken or whatever I'm using in the freezer. My freezer is stuffed, I've told you guys this. Um, so I'm pulling stuff out as much as I can, making um, big batches of things. And um, so I don't have any pre-cooked beef in there right now or ground beef of meat of any kind. So what I did was I pulled out three different uh, ground meats that I did have. I have two things of ground turkey and one thing of ground chicken. Either way, whichever way you want to make this, you're going to do three pounds. And again, it would be much faster if you already had the meat pre-cooked and in your freezer. I don't, so we're going to cook it up now. It's going to it's going to cut down on the time if you can get that done in advance. So. I'm going to go ahead and put these onions in, fry them until they're soft, and uh, then I will tell you what happens next. Onions. Oh, it's hurting my eyes. One thing I forgot, <laughs> I'm like wiping it. One thing I forgot to mention was that it's usually two medium onions, and I had smaller onions, so I used three for this three pound batch. Oh, my eyes. So three small onions or two medium onions for three pounds of beef. Okay, these onions are nice and soft, so I'm actually getting ready to take them over here to my food processor. And here's the food processor, and inside the food processor already are two cans of diced tomatoes. And I'm just going to take the onions and put them in here, and then process it all until it's completely pureed. Uh, shouldn't be too... It, you can have it as chunky or not chunky as you like it, uh, but we're going to have it pretty, um, pretty much pureed because some people in my house don't like chunky vegetables, but whatever it takes to feed them, you know what I'm talking about? So we're going to put that in here, and then I'm going to go ahead and brown up the ground beef. Isn't that beautiful? Those onions, they are so pretty. Okay, I'm going to shut that, and we're going to puree it. Perfect. We'll wait until the ground meat is finished cooking, and then we'll add this. So the ground meat is still cooking, and it's browning. You shouldn't know. Towels on the floor. That's right. Anyway, um, <laughs> so even though I'm using meat that was not already pre-browned, it's a this is actually a super super quick meal uh, because the longest part is frying up this meat and frying those onions. And once that's done, it's pretty much just tossing everything in here and letting it, you know sit for probably 10 minutes and and a lot of times I'll let it sit a little longer just to incorporate the flavors more but it's really ready 
uh, in about 10 minutes or so once you toss everything in here. So if you can skip this part, it is super quick. It's probably quicker than, you know, making everybody in my family, it, we don't have a microwave, but if I've cooked everything for two minutes in a microwave, there's five of us, that's 10 minutes. I mean, it's just as quick as that, um, but it's a little bit better for you. So in my opinion. And, uh, another great thing about this that makes it frugal is that the meat that I'm using is turkey and ground chicken, which is generally less expensive than ground beef where I am. And a lot of times people don't buy ground turkey or ground chicken because they say that the that it doesn't taste the same or doesn't taste as good as ground beef. And you know, it really doesn't bother us, but the great thing about Sloppy Joe's is there's so many other flavors incorporated into it that it almost doesn't matter what meat you're using. You could probably get by with uh, ground turkey and ground chicken with your husband or picky uh, guests or teenagers, <laughs> if uh, that's who you're serving. So I'm gonna finish cooking this up and then I'll show you the rest. Okay, so our meat is browned and I'm going to grab this. This is our onion tomato mixture. I'm gonna take this over here, over the towels, and pour it into the ground beef. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna get a little water and rinse this out and add that in there too. We really don't wanna add too much water. We're just kinda of trying to clean the pan out, make sure we got as much of the vegetables as we can, and uh, put a little bit more liquid in here so it's easier to incorporate. So we're gonna stir this up. And once it's all mixed, we will add in our other ingredients. Okay, first thing we're gonna add is about a quarter cup of ketchup. Get it nice and red and juicy. I'm gonna stir that up. Makes it a little sweet, a little more red. Ketchup has that distinct smell. Now, another thing that you want to add is mustard. Now, I usually do about two tablespoons of mustard. Alas, we are out of mustard. So I'm just going to go ahead and add all the other ingredients. And one of the things that I'm going to add is apple cider vinegar. And I'll probably add maybe another tablespoon or so just to put a little bit extra acid in here because that mustard really helps cut the sweetness. So I'm going to grab the other ingredients and show you what I'm doing. Right on top, I added a couple of little blocks of brown sugar. And I'm going to add, that's probably about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I'm going to stir this apple cider vinegar up in there, cut that sweetness. You guys are getting all foggy there. This brown sugar is going to melt right on in there. So we're going to let that sit there for a second. We're going to add this chili powder. And in case you're not noticing, I'm just going to sprinkle it on there. I'm really looking for about two teaspoons of chili powder. You could do a little more, whatever makes you happy in terms of spiciness. Um, but my family uh, is mixed matched on that. Me and Brian prefer spicy and everyone else prefers it to be more mild. So just depends on how you like it. But it's about two teaspoons. You can go up to a tablespoon or two, depending on your preferences. We also add some Italian seasoning, and I'm just going to pour that in there. It's about two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. It really does make a difference to add the Italian seasoning. I will say that. Um, if There are a lot of things that I would leave out, like the mustard is not really a big deal. I kind of like the flavor of the mustard, to be honest with you, but it's not like it's not going to taste like meat and tomatoes without this mustard. <laughs> but there's something about the Italian seasoning, it really adds something. I'm going to add a little garlic powder. Now you could put um, fried garlic in with your onions, whatever you want to do. I do have some, I just, I just, I'm used to making this with garlic powder, so. Again, a tablespoon or two, depending on your choice. Now that's really it. You could add Worcestershire sauce if you have it. Um, you could add salt and pepper, depending on your taste. Uh, about here is when I'd like to let it simmer for a couple of minutes and um, stir it up and see how I feel about the flavor of it and then decide about adding salt and pepper. So I'm gonna let this simmer for a couple minutes, let, let the brown sugar melt down, let all these uh, flavors blend in, and uh, 
come back and taste it and then decide on the salt and pepper and then really it's done. I mean it really is a frugal quick meal. So let me let this simmer and we'll come back. Mm, I'm gonna do the mom prerogative now and take a little sip of this sauce. Um, it's still a little more waterly, watery than I'd like. It's only been a couple minutes. Super hot. You know, I think it could use a little bit more brown sugar, a little more sweet, and probably a little salt and a little pepper. Again, it's to taste. So it just depends on your preference. I'm adding a little pepper right now. A little pepper. Let me show you. Maybe a little more. I like pepper. And then I'm going to add a little salt. Got my kosher salt here. Just a little sprinkle of that. I mean, it's three pounds of meat. And I didn't salt the meat or anything when I cooked it because I always like to just wait until everything's in there and put it together before I add the salt and pepper. And I'm definitely going to add a little more brown sugar. So let me add that and taste it real fast with this. Oh yeah, just the salt and pepper really adds a lot. But I still think it needs just a touch more sweetness. Just a touch more. So maybe another little little tiny bit of brown sugar. I added probably another teaspoon size lump in the middle. So that's it. I mean, this is this is going to be done. I'm going to let this cook down another five minutes or so. It's probably only been five minutes now. So that's going to be it. I'm going to let this cook down and then I shall show it to you on some bread. Okay, so everything is done and Brianna is hanging around behind me because she loves Sloppy Joe. It's one of her favorites. And right here I have the bun, and the bun is better if it is toasted. Um, Brianna noticed that this sloppy joe is thicker, the meat is in bigger chunks than the last time I made it, and it is better when you fry your meat if you just fry it and cut the pieces of meat down to the teeny tiniest smallest pieces. I didn't do it, I wasn't worried about it, but apparently she noticed the difference, so <laughs> just something to mention. Also, where I put in onions at the beginning, you could also fry peppers. I wanted to mention that. Sometimes we'll fry peppers and put it in there. Brianna prefers it with no peppers. Just whichever way you want to do it. So I'm going to put this, let me show you. I'm going to put this on a bun. You can still see it's kind of liquidy, but once it sits for a minute, it's really not going to be. So I'm going to turn it off actually. And get a little of this non-liquidy stuff and put it right on there. Whoops. See the chunky parts. Chunky. Ah. The chunky meat makes it a little bit more challenging to put on a bun. Makes it a little more sloppy, I guess. But it's a sloppy joe, so there it is. And I am so not like Food Network, like it's not pretty. <laughs> but it tastes good, that I promise you. So there's our sloppy joe. That's our frugal family food meal of the day, of the week, <laughs> for our 30 minute quick meals. And uh, it's definitely well under 30 minutes, particularly if you have the um, onions pre-sliced and the hamburger meat free pre and the hamburger meat pre-cooked so the more things you can do in advance the quicker your meals are going to be i hope that's helpful to you i hope you enjoyed it let me know if you try it put uh, comments down in the description box sloppy joe's is one of our favorites and it's just an easy meal to have anytime you're short on time like we are this week so uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, hey, if I didn't mention it when you're watching this on Friday, it's Brianna's birthday. So happy birthday, Brianna. Happy birthday, girl. Thank you. All right. 14. 14. Big day. All right. So that's it. We will uh, see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm really glad you came to visit us here at the Fundamental Home. Make sure if you enjoyed this video that you click the like button and also click subscribe right below me for more videos coming into your inbox all the time. And also, if you enjoy social media, we've got links up at the top here for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, all the other fun things. And check out thefundamentalhome.com for more information about what we're doing all the time and how we do it, because there's way more details there. And uh, here, over to the right, we have some videos that I recommend. So thanks again for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Bye!